it's Tozer. <laughs> you know, I uh, made this specifically designed so that there would always be openness between us, between the Lord who sits here with me and lives inside me, and the Holy Spirit that has filled me, and with you that has God inside you who binds us together by way of, in this example, video and sharing the Word of God and emotionally, emotionally experiencing His Word, but that always there would be an honesty and a truth between us that we would be able to express that which is real and so as i share these you know i i record them at different times of day you know like tonight it's nighttime but when you see it it's the perfect time for you that you know you have from god a word that is aptly spoken and fitly designed for you whether it be in the early morning the early evening or in the middle of the day and so i share that because i have a a wonderful feeling about this now in the cool of the day as i relax and when i recorded the devotionals from earlier in the middle of the heat i uh because of the severe pain i'm in from some thrown out back that uh, I was pretty down. I mean, it was affecting me greatly, and I could feel that flesh just wanting to, you know, distract me and keep me, you know, burdened. And so after I had recorded, you know, the day's devotionals, I was exhausted, and I, I slept, and I realized that as I slept, that God was trying to tell me that, you know, I don't need to... <laughs> be in the heat of the day, but that I can record these and let him speak when he would. So as the light has changed, and as you see, perhaps different ways we adjust the light in order to make this work, I'm very happy to be here in a 88 degrees on the porch at night. <laughs> oh my, what a blessing. But in Tozer, poets admire nature, prophets look to the Creator. Howbeit then, when you know not God, you did service unto them which by nature are no gods. Galatians 4 8. It is possible to spend a lifetime admiring God's handiwork without acknowledging the presence of the God whose handiwork it is. Nature cannot lift man to God nor serve as a ladder by which he may climb into the divine bosom. The heavens and the earth are intended to be semi-transparent veil through which moral intelligences might see the glory of God in Psalms 119, 1-6 and Romans 119 and 20. But for sin-blinded men, this veil has become opaque. They see the creation but do not see through it to the Creator or what glimpses they do not have are dim and out of focus. With what joy the Christian turns from even the purest nature poets to the prophets and psalmists of the scriptures. These saw God first, then rose by the power of faith to the throne of the majesty on high and observed below the created world from above. Their love of nat natural objects was deep and intense but they love them not for their own sake, but for the sake of him who created them. They walked through the world as though through the garden of God. Everything reminded them of him. They saw his power in the stormy wind and tempest. They heard his voice in the thunder. The mountains told them of his strength and the rocks reminded them that he was their hiding place. The nature poets are enamored of natural objects. The inspired writers are God enamored men. That is the difference and it is vitally important. As we see and we know that in our day, many are those who look at the world as God designed it and think, wow, what majesty and what great glory that 
it evolved or that God created. And it's funny because I never looked at it that way. I, everywhere I've gone from the northernmost points in Alaska where I even walked out on the ice to walk to Russia, and the Bering Sea when it was frozen over, and the mountaintops when I saw a valley that was in the midst of the northernmost parts of Alaska and yet there was a a hot springs there that kept the entire valley warm in the middle of winter where everywhere else was 40 below and I think of that and then I think of Jerusalem when I stood you know in the old city and looked out over the entire panoramic view that I could see from the top of the Mediterranean hostel from the coast of Cape Cod you know, to the beaches in Southern California, from the Canadian Rockies till I drove across Alberta all the way to Vancouver, uh, Vancouver, all the way to the easternmost part to drop down into New York. Everywhere that I looked, I saw beautiful, panoramic, gorgeous settings, and all these things people would have said, wow. And I kept thinking that this is creation under a curse. What would it be like if God removed that? What would it be like if man was no longer imprinted or stamped on everything that I saw? And you know, as beautiful as this will be in the kingdom of God when it's set up for a thousand years, I can't wait to see what else God has in store. I mean, I just think that the universe is a great place to go tripping, to go check it out, to go see what it is that God created in all of his glory without there being a curse. So, whenever you get wrapped up in the beauty of what there is and the majesty, remember this. God created each and every individual aspect of we see and can't see and know and don't know. And all of it is reflecting his creative genius but it's not him, it's what he created. Imagine when you can see God who created all of this. That is what I wanna see, God. I wanna see who made it, not what was created. But it didn't look that bad after all.